This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the religious broadcast services of the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Durham, North Carolina. It is our hope and prayer that as these services come to you today, you will be blessed by the ministry of song, the preaching of the word, and all that God has in store for us today. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before your presence one more time. We thank you for this blessed privilege. For Lord, it is truly a privilege whenever we are able to meet, mingle, and commingle our voices together. We pray, Lord, that as we embark upon this time of worship, that your presence will be with us. Pray, oh God, that all that we do today will be done to your glory and to your honor. Bless us that we might be a blessing to others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, we're going to be blessed with music from our psalmist. Amen. Do I have any saints who want to be a little closer to you? Sunday morning. 
Also, we invite you to share with us in our Wednesday evening midweek Bible study. Each Wednesday at 6 p.m. we're in the study of the book of Revelation and we invite you to share with us each Wednesday at 6. And normally the first Sunday in October uh, will be the, would be the church's anniversary and this would be a special time of celebration, uh, celebrating 150 years of ministry. Unfortunately, during this pandemic season, uh, we're going to put the official celebration on pause and uh, uh, we'll return, return fully to in-person worship. Uh, we will certainly uh, have a glorious celebration of what God has done in the life of this congregation, in this congregation, in the life of this community for more than 150 years. So we Encouraging you to continue to be in prayer for this church as we continue to be a beacon light along the rocky shores of life. And to all of our disciples, we are asking you to continue and to plan on giving your uh, sacrificial gift uh, as we ask each year for uh, the church anniversary. Please plan to do that next week. Uh, and uh, we, we thank you in advance for what you will do. We thank our many viewers who continue to faithfully support the ministry of the church here. Uh, we, we do thank you with, from the depths of our souls and our hearts. Uh, if you'd like to sow a seed into this ministry, you may do so by directing your contributions to Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, 522 Mount Sinai Road, uh, Durham, North Carolina, 27705. That's 5222. Uh, Mount Sinai Road, Durham, North Carolina. Amen. Following the next election, uh, we will have the message for the morning. Amen. Amen. We serve a God who is better to us than we can ever be to ourselves. We serve a God who takes care of all that we We serve a God who sees the no matter what we've done, right? Over oh, here.
chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I shall be reading from the New King James Version, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And he entered the synagogue again. And a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he, meaning Jesus, would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he, Jesus, said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he, meaning Jesus, said to the man, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. Speak, Lord, yes, yes. for your people hear it. Amen. For the time that is ours today for preaching, I want to preach from the subject, if you want it, stretch for it. If you want it, stretch for it. Let me ask you a question at the outset of this message. And my question to you is, how bad do you want it? All right. mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell by the way some of y'all are looking at me that, <laughs> yeah. that you're pondering the question, won't what? <laughs> I, I'll leave that up to you, but I am curious yeah. as to how bad you want whatever it is Jesus. that you want. Uh, maybe it is to succeed in your academic pursuits this year. Mm -hmm. How bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. Maybe it is to find a new job. Mm -hmm. How bad, How bad? Do, do you want it? Maybe it's to make your relationship better. Yeah. How bad mm. do you want it? Maybe it's to break an old addiction. Mm. And the question is, how bad, how bad? do you want it? Mm. Maybe it's to find love in all of the right places. <laughs> how bad? Do you? Maybe it's to climb the corporate ladder. How, how, how bad? How bad? Maybe it's to be more healthy. How bad? how bad? Do you want it? So let, let me ask you one more time. How bad mm -hmm. do you want it? Oh, Jesus. Let, let, let me put it another way. What are you willing to do legally in order to get what you want? Mm. I, I need to take a momentary detour right there and see if I can help somebody. You see, uh, some of us have been operating with a theology that keeps you from placing the focus on you and what you want. Mm -hmm. Because We've been taught that we ought to be focusing on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
okay, somebody ain't feeling it. Let me, let me see on. if I can if, if I can make it plain. Some of us are so focused in our prayer requests for others mm -hmm. and their needs yeah. that we never get around to our own needs. Right. And, and I believe the reason that we do that is because it makes us feel more pious, mm -hmm. more holy, more, more godly when we are praying for others mm -hmm. and their needs as opposed to praying for self and our needs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me hasten to say, we ought to pray for other folk. Yeah. We ought to lift up others before God. Yeah. But can I just be honest with you? Today, every now and then, I, 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 I have to look folk in the eye mm -hmm. and tell them, I know you got some needs. Yeah. And, and I'm going to pray, but but I also got some needs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and every now and then, I, I stand before the Lord and say, Lord, it's me. Mm -hmm. It's me, O oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. Standing in the need of prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every now and then, my mother's going on to glory, but you know the song. It's not my mother, nor my father, but it's me. Every now and then, you ought to have a moment in your life when you look others in the face and say, it's my season yeah, yeah, yeah. to be blessed. Mm. Yeah. So today, if you feel like it's your season to be blessed, let me ask you again, how bad, how bad? do you want it? Yeah. What, what are you willing to do in order to get what you want? All right. now, now watch this. One, one, one of the things that I've discovered is that sometimes we want stuff, uh -huh. but we're not willing to put in the effort to get it. Uh -huh. we, we, we want things to come through us through osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to pass your test. <laughs> but you don't want to step. Yeah. You want a job, yeah. but you won't get out of the bed and go looking for one. Yeah. You want to lose weight, yeah. but you won't exercise and eat right. Yeah. You want the Lord to bless you, yeah. but you won't trust Him any further than you can see Him. But I believe I'm preaching to somebody who can testify that there are no free lunches in life and that you have to work for whatever you get. Yeah. And unless you're willing to put in the effort, mm -hmm. you're not likely going to get the things that you want. Mm -hmm. that, that's, why, that's why this text uh, that we have under consideration today excites me and it ought to excite you. You see, Jesus is getting ready to do something. The, the Lord is getting ready to set his people free. You, you see, the Lord shows up and things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, may, may, maybe, maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm a child of God, but I don't feel free. Well, th that's because you can be a child of God and yet still be bound. Right. Bound by religion. Bound by tradition, bound by the philosophies of people, bound by insecurity, bound by personal doubt. But I believe that by the end of this message, somebody here or somebody watching is going to be free. Mm. Some, somebody is going to come up and come out. Somebody is going to get what the devil said you couldn't have and get what people said you couldn't get. You believe that. There ought to be somebody uh, that ought to shout hallelujah to that prophetic word. Yeah. You, you ought to just nod at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, if you want it, if you want it stretch for it. Stretch for it. Yes, sir. Look, look, look at the text. Look, look at the text. Verse 1 tells us that Jesus entered the synagogue. Mm -hmm. now, now put a pen right there. I, I told you in a previous message the fact that Jesus went to the synagogue which is uh, symbolic of Jesus going to church ought to suggest to us that we ought to go to church. Jesus 
goes into the synagogue. My brothers and sisters, the number one need in the church is the manifest presence of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Can I speak plain in here today? Yeah. In, in many of our churches, we got some of everything else but Jesus. Mm. We got steeples and stained glass. We got talent and testimonies. We got carpets and chandeliers. We got pianos and pews. We got PowerPoints and projectors. We got all of that, but we need Jesus. Not more theology, but more neology. Somebody gonna get that in the next one. My, my daddy, who was a pastor, said that theology without meology is noology. Yeah. Every now and then, I don't care how much you got in your head, every now and then you need to get down on your knees. Yes, this is the third week in a row I've been telling you there's some things that you can get on your knees that you can't get on your feet. Is there anybody here that can testify that it was down? With Jesus. So we need more Jesus. Modern conveniences are nice. But if it's a choice between modern convenience and the manifestation of Christ, it's no competition. Uh, somebody said, you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. Mm. Let, let me tell you something else that I discovered. And that is, not all religious folk and not all church folk want Jesus to show up in church. Okay. Uh, we, we like to sing about him. We like to pray about him. We like to preach about him. We like to talk about him. But the truth is that some of us don't want Jesus to show up. Because when Jesus shows up, he comes in with his own agenda. And sometimes the agenda that Jesus brings is in conflict with our own agenda. Come, come, talk back to me today. And, 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 and so uh, we, 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 we just as happy to come in here, knock a few benches over, you know, say, say hallelujah a few times, and still just mean as the devil. Come on. And, and looking at old funny, and, and we really don't want Jesus to come in because he might come in and start turning over tables. Mm -hmm. Talk to him if he can. This is what's about to happen in the text. Jesus shows up in church, and there's a man in church who has a withered hand. And notice what happens. There was a crowd there ready to accuse Jesus of something. Now, now they ain't got nothing, mm. but they gonna come up with something. Yes, sir. I, I wanted to sink in. Yeah. They ain't got nothing on Jesus, but but they they gonna come up with something. So 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 text says they look closely to see what Jesus is gonna do. They 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 looking to see is Jesus gonna heal the man with the withered hand. Or is he going to allow the man to continue to suffer? Mm. If Jesus heals the man, they're going to blame Jesus for healing or working on the Sabbath. Mm. On the other hand, if Jesus does nothing, they're going to accuse Jesus of not having compassion. Right. Can I check the houses there? Anybody in here that's ever been put in a situation where it felt like you were damned if you did and damned if you did? Right. You, you didn't know what because somebody was going to accuse you of something even if you did nothing. If they had nothing, they were going to manufacture something. All right. Amen. Amen. So, that they were planning to accuse Jesus. And I need to park here long enough to tell somebody that, that sometimes religion itself is the greatest hindrance to the presence of God. So here's a man in church with a withered hand. The, and the very ones who ought to have been trying to help him are holding him hostage to tradition. Now, now somebody's going to shout about this. 
when you're in the right place and the Lord shows up, folk don't have to agree with you in order for you to get blessed. I'm going to say that again. When you're in the right place and the Lord shows up, folk ain't got to nominate you, they ain't got to agree with you, they ain't got to sanction you in order come as a shock to some of y'all. Because everybody in church ain't interested in wanting you to get blessed. Amen. There, there's some folk who are happy to see you struggle. Yeah. They're happy uh, that you have to pinch pennies. Mm -hmm. That they're happy uh, that you're handicapped. They, that there's some folk who take pleasure in your pain. They marry over your misery. They're happy about your hardship. They, uh, they are glad about your gloom. They delight in your difficulty. But oh, you ought to rejoice in knowing that they can't stop your blessing. It doesn't matter how they look at you. They can look at you cross eyes, no eyes. But when the Lord gets ready to bless you, the Lord is going to bless you in spite of it. And we need to be getting ready. Because God is going to bless. Mm. Yeah. And the thing I like about it is that when God gets ready to bless, God doesn't take an opinion poll. Uh -huh. mm. The Lord don't have to take an opinion poll and say, well, how, how many of y'all think brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so uh, ought to get blessed? No, the Lord just blesses. Yes. And, and see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the Lord chooses to bless because the reality is that even if he blesses you, he still got enough blessings that he can bless me. I, I wish I had somebody to get that. Uh, that's why. That's that's why when your neighbor is getting blessed, rather than sticking out your mouth and rather than getting upset and rather than getting jealous, you ought to start praising the Lord. Because if your neighbor is getting blessed. Opposition couldn't stop Jesus from ministering to those in need. And I can't tell somebody today that the Lord is going to show up and minister to your need. And the thing I like about it is that wherever you are sitting in church, the person on the right of you could be just as dead as a doornail person on the left of you can be just as dry as last year's corn shucks. Mm. <laughs> but if you hunger and thirst for the word, yeah. the Lord will bless you. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. The Lord will climb right over on top of 1,000 satisfied, putrefied, fossilized mm. relics of religion and come to meet you at your point of need. Folks can be looking at you funny saying it don't take all of that, but then you need to look him lovely in the eye and say, if you only knew what the Lord has already done for me. That this man is in church with a withered hand. Now, now the fact that the man's hand was withered uh, tells us that either he had contracted some kind of disease or he had been involved in an accident. All right. you, you, you missed it. Mm -hmm. He either contracted mm -hmm. a disease yeah. mm -hmm. that caused his hand to wither, mm -hmm. or he had an accident All right. that caused it to wither. All right. so somebody still ain't got here. It is <laughs> the man was not born that way. Right. Can, can I help somebody? I don't know what your issue is, but I want to tell you that you weren't born that way. You weren't born a thief. You weren't born an alcoholic. You weren't born a drug addict. You weren't born a pimp or a prostitute. You weren't born like that. You weren't born to be a gangbanger. 
it, it was a disease called sin that deformed your life and, and made something ugly and painful. But the good news is that there is a cure. Am I preaching to anybody that knows that there is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul? And that bomb is the blood of Jesus. Somebody can testify what can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Is there anybody here other than me that can thank God for the blood? This man, this man had a withered hand, but he was not born that way. And when Jesus looked at this man, he saw more than just a withered hand. He saw a withered life. Mm. Sometimes our malady is just a precursor to what's really bothering us. Yeah. Talk back to me if you can. Yeah. So sometimes it, it, it's just an indicator. Jesus looked at him and, and, and saw with a light. Uh, he saw all of the man's anger and frustration. He saw all of his disappointments and his broken dreams. He saw how every time the man had tried, he failed. Jesus saw all of that. Yes, mm -hmm. But then Jesus says to the man, stretch forth. Yes. Yes. How about them? Stretch forth the hand. I, I, I know it's going to be hard to do. I know it's going to take some effort on your part. I know you're going to have to push past some pain. I know you're going to have to get over some bad experiences. I know there's going to be some effort required. I know you're going to have to deal with some hypocritical church folk. But go ahead and stretch forth the hand. Mm. And when Jesus spoke those words to the man, it ignited an explosion in his spirit and his faith came alive and immediately the impossible became possible. Right there on the spot, the man's withered hand was made whole. It was made whole because the man was willing to stretch for it. Mm. Let me get ready to close. I just want to remind somebody that you can have it, mm. but you got to stretch for it. Yes. Just like Jesus said to the man in the text, stretch forth thy hand. The Lord is saying to us today, if you want it, you got to stretch for it. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just say a couple of things about stretching. First, first of all, if, if you want to stretch, you got to separate from the crowd. All right. You see, when you stretch out to the Lord, the Lord will take you places where everybody can't go. Yeah. You see, the Bible teaches us to follow the cloud and not the crowd. Are right. oh, you missing? Follow the cloud and not the crowd. Yeah. That withered hand represented all of the can't do's of religion mm. and the negative elements in your life. Yes. And so as long as you stay in the crowd, mm -hmm. negativity will keep you bound. Yes. The crowd will always try to convince you that it's no reason to stretch because you don't have enough money. That it's no reason to stretch because you don't have the right education. That it's no need to stretch because you are too it's no need to stretch because you are too old and if you don't separate from the crowd you won't allow the crowd to rob you of your blessing but if you want it you got to stretch secondly when you stretch for that you will discover that your faith will expand I believe I'm preaching to somebody right now that's made up in your mind that I've got something that I desire from the Lord and all I need to do is stretch for it. i got to reach out my hand and stretch for it. The devil is a liar. The devil is trying to convince you that you can't have it. But I came today to tell somebody what God has for you. It is for you.
be with the Lord last year. Preacher friend of mine, Bishop Ralph Love, would oftentimes close the service by saying, to have the book repeat this, God's got it. I need it. By faith, I can have it. God's got it. I need it. By faith,
for reminding us that eyes have not seen nor ears heard and neither has it entered into the hearts of men and women what you have in store for us. Lord, you enlarge our faith so that we can stretch for it and receive all the blessings that you have in store for us. Lord, we pray for the sick. We pray for the shut-in. We pray for those who are going through bereavement. We pray for people who are still struggling through this pandemic. We pray for the leaders of our world. Continue to bless us that we might be a blessing to others. And Lord, as we do each week, we ask your blessings upon this house and every house where your name is lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you and may heaven.